Fest will start at 10.30, and it's at Little Island, and it's about $5 for parking, but it's, again, it's a time of fellowship, going to the beach. We're going to have water baptisms, and if you want to be baptized, definitely come and talk to a pastor about that, and it's really just a time of, of fellowship. We get to play volleyball, walk on the beach. There's the pier. It's um, a really, really good time, and then we also have the women's retreat, which is coming up in October 7th through the 9th, which I am excited about because I have never gotten to go because I was either too young or away at college. So this year I actually get to participate, but it's the first 25 ladies who sign up and Jessica is leading it. So if you have any questions, definitely go and talk to her, but that'll be an awesome time. And then Antonio is gonna come up and talk to us about the men's retreat. Men's retreat morning everyone all right got four more weeks until the men's retreat that means four more weeks to get your money in to hold your spot down if you want to make the twenty dollar deposit see my wife Lynn she's taking those today um, if you're kind of hesitant about going to men's retreat don't be this is a perfect opportunity for you to get away and retreat with Jesus there was times multiple times throughout the Bible in Mark, Mark John Luke and Matthew where Jesus took off with the disciples just the disciples alone to retreat with them from the rest of the crowd to spend time with them alone to reveal the mysteries of, of what he was teaching. So take that opportunity. Come and, come and spend time with Jesus during that time. The retreat is going to be on the 23rd and 24th. We are taking, um, we're able to take checks. Um, you can make a $20 deposit to hold your seat for that and pay off it up until then. All right, so come spend time with Jesus. Man, it is going to be an awesome, awesome time. All right, and to help back that up, for anybody that, that wants to go but doesn't think they might be able to afford, afford it, we are also holding a um, funds, fundraiser. It's going to be a spaghetti and dinner, uh, spaghetti and um, movie night on the 3rd, right before the um, church on the beach. So come, hey, is this a typo here? Huh? Well, no, I'm looking at this because we got a family pack right now that is uh, $20 for up to five plates. So you can come and get filled with just more than the word, overly filled for $20, that, that'll feed five people. <laughs> so come and enjoy it. You know, if you don't want the family pack, then we do have plates for $5, $5 a plate. So come, enjoy yourselves, come help someone go to a retreat and spend time with Jesus. You know, it's gonna be an awesome, wonderful time for it. We have four weeks left for that. All right, thank you. Yeah, I saw the I saw the family pack, <clears throat> and I I was like I was like yeah family pack, and then I saw it was like only for five people. <laughs> I was like, well, guess I have to get two of them, two family packs. I was gonna eat good that night with everybody. We're going out to eat, kids. Famous last words. Famous last words. Now we've looked at famous last words from people in the Old Testament. We've looked at famous last words from people in the New Testament. Paul and Daniel and looked at Joseph and we looked at all this. But there's one guy that's been missing. Who has been missing in his famous last words? Who do you think? See, Jesus is always the Sunday school answer. I remember uh, Greg Johnson when he used to be he used to be the um, uh, national youth director for Foursquare way back in the day, long before I was Foursquare. And he told this story, and he was talking about being in Sunday school. And, you know, Jesus is always the answer to every question when you're in Sunday school. So, kids, what about this? Oh, it's Jesus, you know. Oh, it's in the Bible or something. And so the Sunday school teacher was, was uh, talking about this story, and and she's making a description. Well, there was, a, there was this little furry thing, and it scurried up the tree. And, and it sat out on a branch, and it had a nut, and it was up there going, you know. And she said, kids, what do you, what do you think it is in the tree? And, and, the, and the kids looking at each other, and they're confused. And she's like, this is kind of obvious what this is. And a little boy finally raises his hand, and he says, teacher, I, I know the answer is Jesus, but it sure seems like it should be a squirrel. And so for the last 30 years, we have had 
Jesus is the squirrel in the tree. And so if you ever hear my wife and I say, Jesus is the squirrel in the tree, that's where that comes from. I don't even know why I told you that story. But we're looking at the famous last words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 28. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. And we always start in verse 19 and 20. But we're going to start in verse 18 this time. Matthew 28, 19, or 18 through 20. The Bible says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain, where Jesus had told them to go. That's verse 16. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority. Everybody say that together. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything. Everybody say everything. I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Those are letters in red. Jesus said that. When you're doing biblical interpretation, when you see the word therefore, anybody know what you ask? What's it there for? Good. We have some biblical scholars here. When you see therefore, it's a dependent clause. That means what's coming after that is dependent upon what comes before it. Therefore, you ask the question, why am I doing what I did afterwards? I need to look back at what's before it. So when we quote, therefore, go, make disciples of all nations, we say, yes, that's what we do. hoo let's go. But what did Jesus say about authority? We're going to look at that word, authority. All authority. Because his last words depended upon that word. So in the area of authority, what is a definition of authority? Write this down if you're taking notes. Delegated influence. Delegated influence. Because everyone who has authority is also under authority. So the only authority that you have has been given to you by someone. I want you to think about your life. You have no authority with the exception of what's been given to you. A policeman has a badge which represents an authority that he has been delegated to from the state, from the country, from whoever the organization was that he is exercising that influence over. How many of you have ever, ever been pulled over by a policeman and have them exercise their influence over you? Just let me see your hands, all of you honest people out there. Thank you very much, Brian. If, uh, if you want to pass out some cards, uh, it would, would be good there. So the authority that the policeman has is to enforce a law. He says, you broke the law. I'm writing you up because you broke the law. Then you have to go and appear before a judge who either upholds that um, accusation or he says, you know, that does not fit in my courtroom for some reason. It either doesn't line up with the law or I don't like the circumstances. Brian has all kinds of ways of talking to the judge so that he sees it from his perspective, which is good because if everybody was convicted of everything that they got accused of, how many of you would like that, huh? Not so much, right? Some of us have been falsely accused. Some of us have been, uh, had a lot of circumstances where we needed to have an advocate or a lawyer to help us out. 
So the authority of the policeman is checked by the authority of the judge. But the authority of the judge is checked by the actual law that he is supposed to uphold and the officer is supposed to enforce. All of them are under authority. What happens when we go and do something on our own, we are called a rogue or a, 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 we, operating under rogue authority. We are not under the authority. We are pretending to be under authority and we get ourselves in trouble. Now, what were Jesus' last words? All authority has been given to whom? Jesus. He is the supreme authority. And every one of us functions under his authority ultimately, and sometimes it's many layers of authority. When I give my children the keys to the car, I am authorizing them to drive my car. Is it their car? No. I'm authorizing them to drive my car. And I give them the key to prove it. Now, when Jesus says, all authority is given to me, therefore, go and make disciples. Everybody say the word more. 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 I believe that in this coming year, 2017, 2016, 2017, we start our new year kind of in September. So we're looking forward to that. But you're going to see a big banner that says the word more. More disciples, more leaders, more communities transformed. What do we do? We at Coast Sands Community Church do those three things. We empower leaders, we make disciples, and we transform communities. That's what we do. I believe the Lord said we need to do more and be more effective and have more disciples. That's what Jesus is saying here. More disciples. All authority has been given to him so that he can delegate influence to you to make more disciples. Well, let's look at this authority uh, part, because I think we have to understand authority as it comes from the scripture and in our personal lives. How many of you love just being told what to do? One of my favorite things in life, God had to take me on a uh, pretty painful journey until I realized that I had an issue with authority. I'm the firstborn. I tell my brothers what to do. See, that's the way, that's the way it typically works. I was, my, my kids, Gavin always wants me to tell him stories, you know, so I, I reach back. I, I think I've told him every story that I can remember. But I remember one time when I was probably about uh, eight years old, nine years old maybe. My, well, my brothers were young enough that they still would take naps from time to time. And we went outside, and we had a dirt pile. So I would take a sieve, uh, you know what, a, one of those colander type things, and we would make what we called sieve dirt. So I'd go out there and I'd shake it out, get all the rocks out of it, and we'd have this real, real fine powder. And then we would take it, add a little bit of water to it, make a paste out of it, and man, can you make a mean mud ball out of some, out of some sieve dirt, out of powdered dirt. And I thought this was really cool because out of that paste and so forth, we painted the entire back of the house with this dirt, I mean, we took this dirt, we made mud balls, and we, this is what happens when you leave kids unsupervised. And, and, and we took and we plastered our tree house, we had this big, huge oak tree, and we plastered that with mud balls. It looked like, like you know, bombs, I don't know what we were saying there were. And it was, it was the most fun that we had had in a long time, until, until mother came outside. And then I was like, oops, I think we did something wrong. And then she put my brothers to bed for a nap, looked at me and said, you are the instigator of all of this. You clean it all up. Here's the hose. Man, I felt like I was scrubbing for days, you know. It was probably only like 30 minutes or an hour, but I'm like, shh, it's not coming off, you know. I got to get up there and scrub it. But I had been given a responsibility, unbeknownst to me, and an authority to watch my brothers 
hey, I was just being a leader. I, I wasn't, well, I didn't think I was leading, but I was apparently leading because I was told that I was leading and I needed to fix it. But authority is something where we have been delegated influence over and sometimes we don't like it when somebody tells us what to do. I've told you that when I went on missions as a young man, God broke me in this area because every place that I went, somebody was telling me what to do. I thought, man, I'm 18 now. You know what? I'm a man. Nobody, nobody going to tell me what to do because I am my own person. I don't care what people think. And well, I kept this all to myself, of course. I was, I was smarter than that. But inside, and then I would go to this place, somebody tell me what to do, and I'd be like, they don't know. Oh, yeah, yes, Mr. So-and-so, I'd be, yeah, I'd be glad of that. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard of. You know what? That guy does not know what he's doing. Inside, I was just retching against the authority. So I was in the Yukon, retched against it there. I was in the Philippines, retched against it there. I finally got to Australia. Wait a second. Different continents, different people. I'm the common denominator. I have an issue. No, I don't have an issue. It's simply that there's all these same kind of people I just keep running into. God must be working on them. And the Lord broke me down and said, you have an issue with authority and you have an issue with my authority. Ouch. Just say it. Okay. We want the authority of God in our life and yet we don't want him to have authority over this heart right here. Because when he has authority over us, he gets to tell us what to do and how to to live. Keep your finger there in Matthew and, and flip over to Acts chapter 19. I want to read a few verses here that are just, I, I think they explain, it's a story that explains how we think sometimes. Now we want to, we want to cast out devils. We want to raise the dead. We want to do some really cool things in the name of Jesus, of course. I'm the great prophet. Let's see some miracles here. Woohoo! And in reality, we're wanting to pump ourselves up, and it has nothing to do with being under the authority of God and exercising what He says to do. Seven sons of Sceva. Let me just read this here. Verse 11 God did extraordinary miracles. Now, this is a whole nother sermon, but I think miracles already are extraordinary. But when you have extraordinary miracles, that's just really cool. Through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and those illnesses were cured, and evil spirits left them. Some Jews who had been around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had been demon-possessed. And they would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Verse 14, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, a chief priest, were doing this. And one day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all, seven of them. And he gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Now, don't picture that too much, okay? But I, I just want you to see that this was a messy situation when people tried to invoke an authority that they had no business invoking because the authority had not taken over their heart. This is what it looks like today. You're in a situation at your job. You're trying to minister to someone. And you, and you remember what the pastor said. 
and you take it and you say, well, this is what you need to do. And the person looks at your life and says, wait a second, I don't see that working out in your life. But you regurgitated something that you heard on the internet or YouTube or, you know, what, some scripture of the day or something, you just regurgitated and you put it out there and you wonder why you're getting beat up. Because the authority of God has not captured this. Just put your hand over your heart, would you, for a moment, and ask yourself the question, is the authority of Jesus Christ reigning in my heart and in my life in all areas? For some of us, it's, yeah, it's a growing progress, uh, uh, process. And if you're like me a few years ago, you would say it with your mouth, oh yeah, Jesus has authority here, until it came to my actions, which were in exact opposition to what God wanted, and even what I said. Matthew chapter 8, flip over to Matthew 8, 5 through 9. This principle is further accentuated here where Jesus is getting ready, or he, he heals the servant of a centurion. And he says, Then Jesus entered Capernaum. A centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, My servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, uh, just, uh, let's see, yeah, there we go. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. This one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Then when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following, truly I tell you that I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. A man under authority was able to exercise authority and he understood that the supreme authority could say whatever he wanted and it was going to be done. So here's a principle. Before you can exercise the authority that you want so badly, you have to completely surrender. If you want to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, see people free from demons, you can strive all of your life wondering why it's not happening. And this is the key. Being completely under God's uh, authority and surrender to that. Well, when we're under God's authority then we can preach what we're already practicing. Look at Matthew 7, just uh, across the page there, verse 28 and 29. When Jesus finished saying these things, he was talking about the wise and the foolish builders, and he was talking about true disciples, and he was talking about the prophetic, ask, seek, knock in there. When he had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. What was the difference? Teachers of the law were teaching, but they did not have the authority. They had the right words, but they had no authority. See, that happens to us sometimes. We have the right words, but when people look at our life, we have nothing to back it up. You can say, ouch, it's okay. But when we have the words with the authority, we can proclaim it and people believe what we say. Sometimes Christians are our own worst testimony. Man, we want to go and we want to be Bible thumpers and tell people where they should go. Tell them what they should do. And then they look at our life and say, that is the biggest fraud that is the 
biggest joke. I would never follow that Jesus because what they proclaim is not what they live. There's no authority. Do you ever have those integrity checks in your life, those little integrity checks that just every now and then come along? I was at the store and I was getting something and I had six of one item and I had a bunch of other items. I was in a hurry. My wife had a flat tire. I'm stressed out. The kids are running around the store like, Dad, I'm hungry, you know, this kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, get it, whatever. I just, I got, get, I got to get out of here. And, and I, in the midst of all of that, I hear the checker with that little wand thingy going, you know, ding, 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 ding. I mean, it seemed like an eternity. And I'm counting as I'm going, like I often do. And I had six items, and I only heard five clicks. I'm taking the kids. I'm, I'm doing all of this. I signed the thing. I'm out of there. I didn't look at my receipt or anything. And the lady says, oh, I, I forgot to ring up the kids' goldfishies. And I'm thinking, dear Jesus, just let the goldfishies here. We got to go. And, and, and I'm like, all right, if I got to pay for the goldfishies, then I'm going to look at my receipt because I think she didn't charge me for one of those cans of Freon. And sure enough, she didn't charge me. And so we're getting the goldfishies, and I say to her, I mean, my stuff's already out, and I say to her, ma'am, um, I, I just looked at my receipt, and you didn't charge me for one of those cans. And she looks startled. She's like, who are you? So she looks at it, looks at me, Counts the number of cans again. You're right, sir. Thank you. So I paid for it and walked out. Now, I never preached to that woman. I didn't tell her. I didn't even say, have a blessed day, ma'am. You know, that, that's Christian code for, I'm a Christian. Are you a Christian? You'll get that when you're standing in the Walmart line. And, and, and yet... What I did say with my life was that I had principle that was backed up by my action. Now, I want that to be every single area of my life that when I speak with God's authority, it has already gripped me right here. I'm not simply saying, oh God, I'm a pastor. I need a sermon on Sunday. Give me something. Let me look back through an old journal and see what was there. It was good back then. It'll be good for Sunday. Oh, there's a verse. Lord Jesus, bring some revelation to it. Hopefully that'll preach. It's like this. Every single one of us, whether we're reading the word, whether we're doing something, it should grip us, and then it should grip the people that view our life. That's the authority. Who has been given all authority? Jesus has been given all authority. And when Jesus lives here, guess what? We have delegated influence to be able to influence people around us. It grips us, and then our words are valid. Now, here is where we come into the power. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, we read that. We are supposed to, if you look at the end of Luke, we're supposed to heal we're supposed to have, we have authority over the demonic. We have authority to do the impossible. Matthew 9, 8, one page over. When the people saw the healing, they were afraid and praised God for giving such authority as this to man. People should look at our lives and say, what is different about that person? They have the authority of Jesus. Now, authority does not mean we lord it over people. Hmm. I'm a Christian. You need to treat me like I'm a Christian because I am the ambassador of the creator of the universe, and you better listen. Sometimes we have Christians that act like that. They get all on their high horse judgmental, and they're all about the authority that God has given them. No, don't. Anybody that has authority does not need to flash their authority, you simply know that they have authority. They live it. Luke 10, 19. 
I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. That's when Jesus is sending out the disciples. I have given you authority. Now, he didn't say he's given us all authority. Who has all authority? He has all authority. But he delegates influence for our particular situation. We have, a, uh, we have a new dog at our house. Some of you have seen the new dog. And uh, he's a good dog. And he reminds me of our dog that we used to have a few years ago. We've had three uh, American Bulldogs. And the, the first one that we had was, was a, a little hard-headed sometimes. Um, tested the patients at other times. And he liked to sneak up into the upstairs where he was not allowed, and he would go in and he would lay on one of my son's beds when he thought we weren't looking at night. And then he would come and he would sneak out and he would slink down the stairs and get back and lay under the piano, and we would wake up and we would think he would be there all night. Well, I woke up one night and something wasn't right. And so I walked out of our bedroom in the dark, and I had this sense. Over in that room, the dog is watching me. Completely dark. I had this sense. Now he knew who was the authority in our house. I was the authority. But there was a greater authority in the house, and that was her. I had a certain amount of authority, and at that moment, the greater authority was sleeping. And I took in the dark, and I pointed to the room, and then I pointed down the stairs. Now, this is completely dark. I can't see anything. Went like this, and I went like that. Two seconds later, I hear toenails. Click, 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 click. put on put on put on put on put on put on you see, that's what authority is. I didn't have to say a word. I didn't have to scream and yell. I didn't have to put on a show. I didn't have to wake anybody up to get the authority to go and do that. You see, that's the authority that God gives us when we have the authority of God covering us. So maybe you're here and you say, wow, I've been focusing on the wrong thing. I've been focusing on getting the authority of God so that I can do these miracles and things. Maybe you should be focusing on the authority of God transforming right here. Now, what does he say? the end of this passage of Scripture in Matthew 28, all authority has been given to me. And then he says, make disciples. Now, I did a little word study here in the Greek, and the word make is not in the Greek. There's no word that says, you know, to make or whatever like this. It is a, it is a word that means that we make disciples is really the, the one word, but it says you are to disciple all nations. This making disciples in English, we put it in there, but everything that we do is learning, being, being a learner that reproduces learners. Kind of sounds like 2 Timothy 2 too, doesn't it? Always brings a smile to my face when I say that. We want to be people who are under God's authority and we reproduce people who are under God's authority. It's essentially what we're saying here. Learners who reproduce learners. These are Jesus' last words. I think we would be good to listen to them and apply them to our hearts and our lives. So I have some questions for you. You might want to write these down, process them a little bit. What are the areas in my life where I am not currently functioning under God's authority. That's those little closets in your life. God, I give you 
85%. Shouldn't you be happy with that? You can call the shots in the living room and in the kitchen and in the bedroom, but not in the bathroom. That is, you know, pfft. that's private business. I, you, whatever your area is, God, you've got my finances. I'm fine with the finances. You've got my relationships. I'm fine with that. Now, my family, on the other hand, I got that. You put in those areas in your life, I would venture to say, if we are honest, there are areas that need to come under God's authority. Oh God, my actions are completely above reproach. I always do the right thing. But my mind is off in another place. Well, nobody knows about that, right? But God knows about that. Does he have authority over your thoughts? Does he have authority over your recreation time? Does he have authority over everything that you do, everything that you say, everywhere that you go? 100% authority. Jot those things down. And we're going to submit them to the Lord today. Now, the second thing is, some of us are not practicing what we preach. We, we would say, God, I desire to have you over every area of my life, but, but, I'm not perfect. I think we would all admit we're not perfect, but if I preach it enough, Maybe I'll become perfect because that's what faith is, right? So I'll tell everybody about everything that they should do, hoping that somehow I will come into line. And the Lord says, hold up, hold up. Don't, don't preach something that you're trying to convince yourself of. Maybe hold up on that sermon a little bit and preach something that has actually taken root in your heart because then you will have authority, not frustration for everybody else who's watching you. Just a thought. And for some of you today, as you want to see God do miracles in you and through you, you're saying, God, I've surrendered You've, t you've shown me some great principles that I've been sharing. And now would you empower me with your Holy Spirit to be able to exercise that authority? Some of us are there today where you say, bring it on, Lord. Bring it on. You know, the great thing is you can submit all of these things today. You can say, I, I want this area to come under authority. And when I do that, Lord, would you just empower me to do what I haven't been able to do in my life? Because if all authority has been given to Jesus in his last words, and he delegates that authority to us, guess what? We should be doing greater things than he has done. That's what he said. Greater things. That means there's a whole bunch of us. There was only one of Jesus. And so all of us together are doing greater things than Jesus did. Everywhere you go, Jesus could only be at one person's business at the same time. And you all, tomorrow morning, are going to all be out in the field doing the greater things. So how will we respond? Will we just be hearers of the word and do this, or will we allow the authority of God to come in today? I, I really want to grow in this area. I told you that I've been just enjoying the love relationship with Jesus lately. You know, as I spend time in here in the sanctuary and I'm just enjoying his presence, there is this aspect where God continues to take me to a deeper place of being completely consumed by him. And you know what I thought last week? I was completely consumed by God. But guess what? This week there's a new consuming. Well, now I feel completely consumed by God. But you know what my suspicion is? Next week there's going to be a greater consuming by God and a greater authority of him in my life. Because as he reveals it, guess what? I just, I, I want to be at the point where I immediately say, God, you can have that. You can have rule over that area of my life. So as Bonnie comes and, and we, we begin to process this, let's not leave here today the same person that we came in. 
If there's an area where the Lord has put his finger on, I want you to take a bold step and I want you to just say, Lord, there's an area in my life where, where I, I need his authority. I'm not going to put you out there. We're not going to have a sign, you know, not a scarlet letter, not anything. But if that's you and you say there is an area in my life where I need the authority of God to just overshadow me and I need to give this to God, would you just stand right where you are? Would you just, uh, just say, God, this is, this is, this is yours. This is yours. And for some of us, it's, it, it's almost that feeling of like, oh, here I go again. All right. I'm standing, but I've stood before and it didn't work. I, I have this sense that today is different. That today is different. Because God's raising up a, 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 a movement of people that are going to be able to make more disciples. And what's going to make this one stick is because this, this day you're going to recognize that it's not just about you. It's not just about you having the authority of God in your life. That's a piece of it, yes. But it's for a purpose. And that purpose is going to make it stick this time. Father, I thank you that today you have, you have called us to make disciples with a delegation of your authority. But first of all, you want to sit as the authority on the throne of our life. And today you see every single one of our hearts. You see every single one of the areas in our lives that are being submitted to you today. And I ask you, Lord to open up the eyes of the vision of the people here, every one of us, that we would be able to see why you have called us to be under your authority so that we as a movement can exercise authority so that more disciples are made. More people come to you. More people grow in leadership. More communities are transformed. More of what you want of your kingdom comes to this earth through all of us who are exercising your authority delegated to us. If you're able to today, would you find a place to kneel? You, you, if you want to kneel here at the front, if it's easier, that's fine. If you want to kneel at your seat, that's fine too. But just in humility, Lord, I recognize your authority in me in a new and a fresh way and I give you control ouch I said it I give you control Lord
I believe the Lord's showing me what he's, one of the things that he's doing here is that as, as we as a mighty army come together, we are more effective than a bunch of mercenaries out there doing their own thing. And that what he's saying is that when we are under his command, we will be able to go wherever he has us, highways, byways, job, wherever places we go, people we meet, and he will be able to instantly give the call and say, Jessica, I need you to do this right now. Yes, sir, I'm right there. Michael, hear my voice. Here we go. We're not doing our own thing, Mickey. You're going to hear the voice of the Lord. And you're going to look around and you're going to say, what? Where, where'd that come from? It came from your commander in chief. You're going to be there at the right place at the right time as part of a vast army that has been deployed into every highway and every byway under his supreme authority and under his command. And if every one of us do exactly what the commander in chief says, well, we already know that we, we win the war, but we win that battle for that day completely surrendered, totally committed to everything that he says in the moment, in the instant. We're ready. Under authority, exercising authority. Under authority, exercising authority. They weren't just nice words that Jesus said at the end. They were his parting words. Now let's roll. Let's do it. So as we go from this place today, I want to bless you with Paul's words. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you need prayer today as, as uh, we prepare to leave, I want to just invite you to come. We're going to have some elders and prayer team up here. We don't want you to leave without your encounter with the Lord or without uh, the healing that you need or without the touch from God that you need. You need prayer for a specific situation that you're facing. Please come and receive from the Lord today before you leave. God bless you in Jesus' name.